And here we go. We're live, 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 live. Another Tuesday night with Mod Extra, everybody. Uh, I'm getting a message. You can delay ads for 10 minutes. Insert ads during a break. What's that? Huh? There's like a little button here. What's this do? There you go. Delayed the ads. Well, let's just uh, vamp for a bit and see if anybody turns up. Connor's here already, right out the gate. Hi, Connor. How you doing today, my man? Hope you're well. Have a little swig of me tea. Get me brewing me. Perk me up a bit. <laughs> yes, we're afraid of. I've, I've had my um, hair cut. I'm going on holiday on Saturday. Going away for Easter for a couple of weeks. I'll talk about that a bit later on. And uh, this is my pre-holiday <laughs> shearing. So that I'm not uh, hot and bothered. Uh, while getting my sun and sand, you know what I mean, and working on this pasty tan. Hey, Jono. Oh, well, they're all coming in. Colonel Angus, another one noticing the fresh cut. That's right. It only looks as short as it does because I wear it so long, usually. Oh, that's... Uh, we're going to highlight that message from Connor there. Changed my work from home day this week just so I could stay up for this. Ah, you're working from home tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, grinning face with big eyes. <laughs> That's very sweet of you, Connor. <laughs> well, I'm just going to vamp and ease into it for a minute while we're waiting for some folks to turn up. But uh, as always, I've got some prepared content, some uh, topics of discussion that I've prepared and lined up to uh, to discuss. Just a few things that have caught my eye over this last week. Uh, while you... Listen to your friend, Chris. You know, me. I've <laughs> been playing around with some settings and things, seeing what new and exciting stuff I can I can do with my online broadcast system. So now I can go, look, folks, would you like to... Oh, no. Uh, hang on. Would you like to know my socials? They're right there. <laughs> oh, dear. I need to, like, work on getting started don't I like an intro to warm things up I tried to go back and edit last week's you know when I had the microphone balls up at the outset of last week's stream and I tried to use the YouTube editor to cut the first couple of minutes off where where the microphone you can hear me now presumably uh where, where, where the microphone was off and I couldn't figure out how to do it and then it started to upload it as a new video and things and it was all very upside down and back to front um Here's Bobby joining us. Ah, oh, Bobby, spoiler alert. After seeing the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 3-pack with both versions of Nick Fury, now makes me want to watch the horrific Dave, <laughs> David Hasselhoff S.H.I.E.L.D. movie. It's not that horrific. It's just mega cheese, isn't it? But uh, spoiler alert, I plan on talking about that tonight. Um, so start gathering your thoughts and reflections on the S.H.I.E.L.D. 3-pack because uh, I will be bringing that one up, definitely. All right, well, we've got a few heads here. Let's get started then. Let's start with the... Uh, uh, the proper introduction. So, folks, welcome once again to... Listen to your friend Chris. Where I ask you to come join me and listen to me, your friend Chris, talk about my life and times as an adult collector. And I invite you to share your thoughts in the chat. We'll take intervals to see what's going on and what folks are thinking and talking about as we crack on through. As usual, I've prepared some content, but it's highly likely that we'll be taking some cul-de-sacs and tangents uh, along the way. Got my notes ready. There's my notes all set and ready to go. So I have organised my thoughts somewhat, multicoloured even, changed colour on the fonts and all that kind of stuff. So I'm all set and ready to go. Uh, hopefully you're all set and ready to go in chat. So let's let's do this. I reckon about an hour again, do you right? About an hour, hour 15, I think we were last time. So uh, let's go to the prepared content. Let's just go straight into the prepared content. Unless there's anything anybody out there would like to let me know or dis or put on the discussion list that I can line up for the back end of the prepared content. In the meantime, I'll take a moment's pause to reflect to myself about how to get these streams started and get up and running and going. Um, because there's like this weird moment of awkwardness as you sort of ease into it. Let's just do the prepared content. Let's do what I prepared. That'll that'll help me get into, into the swing of things. So let's get started, folks. And the first thing that caught my eye, uh, well, I say caught my eye, it caught Bobby in chat's eye, and he 
pointed it out to me and I went away and investigated further is that WonderCon is taking place over this coming weekend, 29th to whatever it is, the 31st. Uh, so taking place over the Easter weekend in Anaheim, out in California. And Hasbro on the Saturday night, um, well, not uh, Saturday afternoon in real time, Saturday night for like me, uh, I've got a, a stream, uh, not a stream, sorry, a panel taking place where, uh, well, they're talking about action brands. That's what it says on the thing. Here's the link uh, going into chat now. Should be going into chat now. There we go. There's the link if anyone wants to go take a look at the website or any of you folks uh, around California and fancy giving it a try. But um, there were a couple of quotes in the little blurb for the panel that they're running on Saturday night that caught my eye. And I wanted to bring them up and see what you guys out there in the world of chat um, thought about these quotes or what speculations you may have in relation to these little bits that caught my eye. So here's the first one. It said uh, that there's going to be an announcement of a new Cobra team members joining the G.I. Joe Classified Series line. So that's pretty straightforward. It looks like we're going to be getting some of this... Um, so Full Force had the spoiler list floating around earlier today it looks like some of these um folks we're going to get a look at or an announcement or i don't know speculate get speculating in chat for me but that's the first thing so we definitely get gi joe classified series announcements and it's cobra team members they've tipped the uh, tipped a wink towards what they're going to be revealing and then it says next quote please um and Marvel, including exciting news about the Marvel Legends product line, which I thought was even more interesting. Isn't that an interesting choice of language there? <laughs> they bit the right side. <laughs> so Bobby in chat, folks, for anyone watching this on video in demand, has just said they picked the right side. Cobra has benefits. They've got an excellent gym, swimming pool, table tennis, and, uh, you know, relaxation rooms. It's all going on. <laughs> It's like Cobra. But aren't they? That's um, that one there in particular. We'll circle back around to the Cobra team member speculation for G.I. Joe in a moment. Um, but I felt like that was really interesting choice of words for the Marvel Legends, including exciting news about the Marvel Legends product line. Is it me? Am I reading too much into that? Or does that not seem like a very strange way of expressing it? <laughs> Connor, full as figures says, well, the Black Series Imperial stream was anything but Imperial figures. Yeah, indeed it was. Um, I didn't watch. I didn't watch. I heard about everything um, Black Series related after the fact. And I thought a number of the things that were talked about were revealed on the stream. And it turned out they weren't when I watched Vern on Saturday night. I was like, all oh, right, I didn't even know that. I have got... Oh, well, I'm probably in the... I'm going into minuses now in terms of percentage of interest that I'm taking in Black Series at all. Now, the only thing I thought about picking up recently, Black Series, just to take one of those little cul-de-sac-y tangents, is the uh, retro card-backed Stormtrooper, because I fancy the Stormtrooper. I've got a, like a Darth Vader and a Boba Fett up the top there that I thought Stormtrooper might you know, make nice company for. Jonathan Redmond here. John O'Cobra saves a fortune in pensions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's great. They, they've got this whole little town. They put everybody up. <laughs> you get a house, start a family. You get really well looked after. <laughs> so speculation time then, folks. Into the chat. Let me know. Cobra team members, who would you like to see? Who do you think it's going to be? Have you picked up some rumours rustling around on the wind? I know a few of you guys uh, keep your ears much more to the ground than I. Um, anything in terms of who we might be finding out about on Saturday. And number two, thoughts on that choice of language there around the Marvel Legends stuff. Am I reading too much into that? Or is there something, is there something there? Let's see what folks have got. So Connor says, we're waiting on Retro Cobra Commander images. Could be him and the Snow Serpent. Yeah, we've not seen the Snow Serpent. No, we haven't yet, have we? The, so the Snow Serpent was name only revealed at the same time as Rakondo. And, uh, was it? Oh, no, I can't, you know, I can't. Once again, getting tired. Um, can't remember, but yeah, it could very well be. So, I mean, it's, a, it's at a con, isn't it? So at conventions, they don't tend to, 
they don't tend to pluck out, you know, pull out figures and it tends to be PowerPointy. Let me show you a picture of a thing on the slide, doesn't it? So some digital renders of some stuff that we know is to be coming um, would probably be a reasonable guess for sure. And uh, let's see what Jono... Uh, oh, and Connor there says, I would like to see the Cobra Tro Troopers reissued. That's an interesting choice. Uh, elaborate on that for me, please, Connor. Um, Jono there, I can see why Hasbro would increase the classified team, seeing that the line is really taking off. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's absolutely insane at the moment. I mean, obviously, a lot of excitement knocking around, uh, particularly in North America, because uh, Metalhead shipped, Retro Recondo shipped, Retro Duke, Retro Scarlet... Um, Quick kicks, Techno Vipers knocking around. I've got a quick kick in a Techno Viper. It's currently sat in His Majesty's Customs. <laughs> the bastards got me. They, you can't import as much stuff into the country as me without getting clipped every now and again. But I was like, God damn it, because I wanted them to come before I went on holiday. <laughs> hey there, Reels Zim. <laughs> yeah, Bobby there say let's have Metalhead's grandmother. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Particularly with Norgahide on the way, you know, because um, that was uh, it was it was Metalhead Norgahide and his and his uh, grandmother, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, Fredo says there was a digital render of the snow stupid. Yes, there was. I remember talking about it because it's much bluer, isn't it? Much bluer, so possibly not. Then it, it's if I was a betting man, I'd, I think it will be digital render reveals because. I would I would expect in the convention panel setup it will be you know row of desks microphones audience PowerPoint slide deck behind them at least in my experience you know what I've seen take place at conventions before it's very very rare that they pluck something out although was it at San Diego Comic Con or New York Comic Con they started to then pop real figures in the glass cabinets at the Hasbro display stand didn't they so it's still maybe the case that we're going to see some figures, you know, some in-hand three-dimensional figures, just possibly not at the panel necessarily, so much as sneaking some stuff into the into the display. I know Lenny got a cheeky little thrill. Was it... Um, oh, it was Mutton Junkyard, I think. Was it Mutton Junkyard that they snuck into the display? And a few folks, the pictures started hitting the socials of, you know, folks who were there and taking shots of it. Um, who else have we got on the Cobra list? So we got, like, Raptor and Nemesis Enforcer. I'm just trying to think the uh iron grenadier the frag viper dude so there's a, yeah there's quite a few that we know are on the way yeah i think an ad's about to go folks apologies i don't know how to change the ad setting so if you're getting an advert uh, hopefully you're not missing too much of the good quality chat here uh let's have a look what's uh, what folks are talking about in chat uh, so Connor here. Well, Muggins here never got the Cobra Island Trooper and it eats away at me. <laughs> okay. I don't know which one I've got. I missed... So out of the Trooper selections, I definitely only picked up one version, which I think I might have got the infantry one. I got the one with the two pistols and the smaller rifle, if that makes sense. And I didn't get the one with, the, like, the, the officer with the insignia on the helmet. Uh... I don't know why they bothered with the digital render of the retro snow serpent when it's just the same figure with less accessories. Yeah, and some very slight colour changes for sure. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Rick's here. Hello, Rick. How are you doing? Uh, Rick would like a polar bear with Legends Canadian flag stickers like the one he had as a kid. Yeah, well, of course, we had the uh, Union flag on ours over here. Um, a retro Cobra Trooper seems popular. So, Bobby, are you talking about... When you say retro Cobra Trooper, are you talking about, like, with the, the sort of really skin-tight... <laughs> <laughs> with the black braces and the, you know, the, the very uh, 80s looking outfit. That would be cool if they did that, to be fair. I'd be on board with that. Um, Jono here. Yes, Pulse Con was weird in the Mutton Junkyard one display, but not mentioned. Oh, yeah, okay, right. So I, I certainly remember seeing the photos of them going into the display. And there were some other 3D characters that we hadn't seen before that definitely went into the display, although... You know, I've slept many times since then. Uh, but I, did, I didn't remember that the Mun Junkyard hadn't been referenced at all. But I think that's, you know, that's... that's um, I get the sense that that's just like Lenny and Tony uh, having their own little fun, little bit of entertainment. Let's slip this in here. Let's see if anyone notices. Just kind of enjoying, enjoying themselves and getting into the convention buzz and vibe for it. Um, which I'm all for, fair enough. You know, 
the, a, pass, a passerby who knows G.I. Joe Classified is definitely going to clock that and get the photo up on Insta or uh, over on X ASAP, aren't they? Oh, Action Force Theory. I think uh, new around these parts, Action Force Theory. So welcome. Pleasure to have you here. Uh, we're still waiting for Monkey Wrench from the Knox. Yes, he's on the list as well, isn't he? Although uh, I'm thinking about sort of the, so the name-only kind of timeline. And again, I think the full force has actually mathed this out and got what's 2024, what's 2025. But I'm just sort of shooting back. I think Monkey Wrench was a more recent name-only reveal. And I'd be surprised if that was at the WonderCon announcement. That said, they have jumped, hopped around, haven't they, in the past, so it's not out of the realms of possibility. I'd certainly like to see Monkey Wrench. Um, you know, good, good, good Welsh lad. Uh, everyone's saying hi there in chat. Okay, cool. What about the Marvel Legends stuff, though, folks? Is it? Am I reading too much into that sentence? Do we think there's anything more significant to the to the line? Exciting news about the Marvel Legends product line. Is it just a, a flowery way of just saying, oh, they're going to show some digital renders <laughs> too? Or is that actually, you know, uh, pointing out something potentially meaningful uh, for the Marvel Legends product line? I mean, if there was a big, big change, then um, I think something would have leaked by now or there'd be whispers on the wind, wouldn't they? You know? uh baron iron blood from bobby yeah i mean i absolutely and i know others here in chat like uh jono and connor i think we would all be very excited if the classified line did you know the baron the black major uh the red lasers so on so forth that would be super exciting um because we obviously have a you know a deep a deep connection to that part of the wider action force law funnily enough i've just recently read uh, or started reading the the um garth ennis he's done i think it might have been last year i've only just got around to it uh, a, a, a load of battle action force comic books with the the kind of old school the really old school sort of world war ii uh, battle action force style stories which precluded even the you know the action force and uh, red baron type stuff uh, Baron Ironblood type stuff. So, uh, but yeah, I'd be very excited to see old Buckethead in the uh, in the line. I don't think that's going to happen, though, is it? I, I think I think as much as we'd like it, I don't think it'll happen. It is perhaps too obscure. Um, although they did do a Brazilian only release, didn't they, with Glenda? Uh, but I think that might just be a, a touch too obscure for the wider um, the wider crowd. Um, who knows? But I'd be very excited to see it. Uh, John says, very interested to see the classified take on Nemesis Enforcer. Me too. Me too. I've, I mean, I've said this before, and I know a few of you folks have been around the channel and watched my content to, to have heard me say this, but in my older age, I've definitely become a lot more engaged and interested in the more weird, wacky, wonderful, idiosyncratic characters and leaning more into the, um, you know, the sci fi madness uh, of it all, which I, to me is G.I. Joe all over, you know. Um, and I'm very curious to see because I love the, the you know the design methodology, the design approach of Lenny and his team. I'm just really excited to see what they can do with that. I think there might be something, um, something, and and with his appearance in the Cobra Commander comic, of course, and um, that's obviously well aligned. If you look at the Zorana design, for example, in the Cobra Commander comic, that's very well aligned with the classified figure and. Um, and the the aesthetic and look of of her, so yeah, that'd be really interesting to see, and I'd be very excited to see uh, that at WonderCon this weekend. Uh, John O's up for some red shadows. Action Force Theory's up for some red shadows. Okay, well, okay, maybe maybe it's not quite as obscure as, obscure as I claimed. Uh, let's see. Uh, Legends has kind of stalled a bit with new movies. Maybe some Echo reveals. Yeah, is that? Could you? <laughs> Could that qualify as exciting news for the Legends product line? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Open to interpretation, that one. Uh, Battle Action Force, what a great comic. Yeah, you're talking about the classic or the, the Garth Ennis sort of new ones um, that have been done in, in recent months? Uh, pretty much all the Red Shadow characters apart from the Baron turned up in the IDW Joe comic run. Oh, did they? So I didn't... Um, 
I'm way behind on... I know all the old Marvel UK reprints, G.I. Joe reprints, that turned up in Action Force comics back in the 80s. Reread those a couple of times in my youth and reread them recently just, you know, because. And I've been rereading some story arcs, but I'm not as... Uh, I'm nowhere near into the, whatever it was, the 200s the, or late 200s that IDW is. And I didn't know that. I did hear um, that a version of the Red Shadows turned up in the Devil's Due comic books as well, but I never, definitely never read those, so I've got no nothing to, can't make any comments on that. Uh, Connor says, honestly, don't think we'll ever see the Red Shadows in Classified, given the uniform. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, is it? We, we make a lot of assumptions. It's not all that dissimilar to the uh, retro Coco that they put out um, with the Hiss tank, so maybe they could do something there. Yeah, so just as Jono says a little later on, they could modern it up and keep the helmet. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, Fluffle, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Got the grandparents visiting, so can't stick around to catch the replay. No worries, mate. Hello to the family. G-Force has joined us. Hello, G-Force. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Pleasure to have you, as always. Um, all right, well, there you go. So, WonderCon, looks like there's some interesting stuff going on. I mean, I, I, I'll, re I'll repost that link in chat because uh, I was looking through the schedule of events that they've got in the um, uh, on the web page and was like, holy moly, there's loads of stuff going on. Tons of good comic book stuff going on. I know a few folks out uh, out there in the world have, have criticised comic cons of late because they've not been very comic-y. They've, they've kind of become more sort of um, large-scale movie-related events. Um, but tons of panels and artist stuff and, you know, action figure, toy, uh, more more kind of more on the ground level of, of nerdy comic con type stuff. So go and have a look just out of interest because there's some awesome stuff there. Uh, yeah, Wolfredo saying, only really looking forward to what we get for the G.I. Joe class flying. Yeah, that's fair enough. They've got Transformers and Power Rangers stuff going on as well. I skip right, <laughs> right over that myself. Yeah, okay, no worries. Action Force Theory, take it easy. Thanks for swinging. Bye. Uh, all right, cool. So there's that bit of um, prepared prepared stuff that caught my eye this week. Let's move on to the next thing on the agenda. Uh, Bobby mentioned it a bit earlier. Let's talk about this Marvel Legends 3-pack. And I think the first thing I've got to say is that I've got to perhaps do a little bit of a retraction because when the this was very first revealed, the original digital renders, the two replacement heads um, for Nick Fury and Sharon Carter weren't advertised. We didn't know about them. And I was very critical of the head sculpt on the Sharon Carter describing. Well, I wasn't pleased about the pullback hair. I was like, every time I've ever read a comic book with Sharon Carter in it, she does not have pullback hair. She's got the big, you know, flowing blonde locks. Uh, number two, the the eyeshadow situation makes her look like she's having heroin withdrawal. <laughs> those were, I think those were my exact words. And so I've got to make a retraction because obviously they've thrown in uh, the two extra heads there for Nick Fury and for Sharon Carter, um, which has turned my head a little bit more towards the set. I'm now I'm a bit like, ooh, maybe, maybe I'd be interested in that. Um, Sharon looks a lot better with the longer hair. Of course, the fact that she's got the new Black Widow book is a plus, definitely a pro there. Although the black shoes still, with the white outfit, still don't look right to me. Uh, so she looks a lot better with the hair, looks a lot less like she's having heroin withdrawal. And just generally a little bit more um, in line with my you know, recollections of seeing the character in the comic books. And then with Nick Fury, if, you know, if, whether you want, you know, classic... Nick Fury Senior, or if you want Nick Fury Junior, or if you or if you're an Ultimate Comics line fan, then you've got your you know you could take your pick there, make it as you want. Um, so I think that that range of choice is very very good. Uh, I'd certainly be a, a classic six one six Nick Fury Senior guy from my time reading Marvel comics, and my nostalgic memories are of uh, you know the cigar chomping. <laughs> <laughs> I patched up Nick Fury from my perspective. So worth a second look, I reckon. It it just it looks like a nice set. What I just think it would probably be one of those that I would jump onto if I saw it hit clearance, which leads me to another point I wanted to make. I've just picked up um an X-Men 275 Banshee 3 pack, 
which I think is with Gambit and Psylocke. And I've just picked up the Strife five pack for I got the Banshee three pack, I think, for $29.99. And I got the Strife three pack for 45 quid from Indeman Toys. So which is a massive discount. And uh this is this has gone up for pre-order today, in fact, and it's up on Hasbro Pulse for $74.99, $75.99. So, you know, it it's a lot, although it is sort of 25 bucks a figure, which is kind of about, you know, right. But I definitely think it might be one that I'd keep an eye out for and if it swung round in a sale at an independent retailer like In Demand Toys or Kapow Comics over here or something, I'd, I'd be tempted. I'd be tempted with the Sharon Carter, with the... The problem is, is that... I'd kind of just be buying it for the sake of buying it. I did this with the Maria Hill Quake. I sort of bought it for the sake of buying it, and now I don't don't put it out on display or use it. Excuse me. Or use it a great deal. I picked up, uh, what's his face? The Martin Freeman character from Black Panther as well. Although I did that because I wanted the Martin Freeman head and a suited, I wanted a suited character because I bought the uh, Tony Leung Lung Lung from uh, Shang-Chi and popped his head on and made my own little John Woo hard-boiled version of the character with a bit of a kit bash so but i suppose that's the point isn't it is that um no hang on finish the first point and then start your second point chris so um really in terms of marvel legends collecting it's x many stuff and then a few things that i bought for the sake of buying it and now i've kind of decided some of you might have seen uh i was talking about iron man last week to have a bit more of a classic avengers display going on but that, that's it i'm just I'd, I'd possibly be buying it for the sake of buying it like i bought the x-men three pack on sale because i want that that classic look banshee uh, and having a um gambit head swap and stuff's not the worst thing in the world and i bought the strife five pack because i want the strife the that classic you know cable clone villain so i don't know it's ter it's definitely turned my head more and it does look like a cool pack and i'm a lot happier to see the nick fury i wouldn't mind having the classic look 616 nick fury senior to kind of roll into that classic avengers thing display option that i want but i don't know if i I, well, I I don't I do know I'm not forking out seventy five quid for a three pack just to get one body with a head. And while I like the Sharon Carter now with the longer hair, and I think that female Black Widow book is really quite decent. Yeah, that's it. If I see it in game for twenty five quid, Jobby, you know what I mean. So there we go. Uh, but let's have a swing through chat and see what the chat have got to say about the um, Marvel Legends Shield Agents of Shield three pack. Uh, oh, uh, so Bobby's still on the on the GI Joe. Well, after seeing Cobra Commander at the end of issue number three, when he spent that weekend with the Dreadnoughts, makes me want to have a figure like that. Yeah, who, uh, somebody I know was talking, chatting on the Discord about the, with, with the uh, smiley face painted on in blood. The Toy Anxiety Channel are great for covering the live panels at various cons. Oh, brill, great tip, John. Thank you um so right now i'm caught up here we go so connor says nice set just not his thing yeah i think i'm sitting around in the same kind of space as you with that there connor uh Jono says it's rare you never marvel legends these days yeah that's fair i'm still i'm still quite active in the x-men collecting space for sure uh g-force just grabbed two legends which two legends g-force let us know Uh, been waiting to find Hallow's Eve Jack o' Lantern. Today was the day. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I wasn't going to go to GameStop, but it's right next to the vape store. Yeah, so I've been into, I've been doing a bit of pre holiday shopping. I had to grab a few bits before we go away. And uh, Smith's Toys is on the same retail park as the boots <laughs> and the Tesco's that I was going to. And, uh, yeah, I did have a swing up, up and down the aisles uh, after after Jono had reported to me that um, the Jada Street Fighter, the new Jada Street Fighter figures were going to be turning up in there. But uh, there wasn't anything around. A little bit of DC multiverse, but like old um, movie tie-in stuff like uh, Black Adam and um, Shazam 2. And there was um some black series stuff but again sort of disney plus show tie-in stuff there's not it's not um yeah the variety is is not appealing to to me as an audience member as a customer there 
Um, and I went on their website, and the Street Fighter stuff's not now expected till May, which is which is fine. But it said on their website arriving March the sixteenth to the twenty fifth or something. So I thought, oh, they're probably in now. Anyway, um, so I feel anyway. You're getting back to the point. God, you can tell I'm tired tonight. I'm a proper rambly mess compared to uh, other times. Uh, I'm right there with you, G Force. Right there with you. Don't don't blame you one bit. And look, wasn't it worth it in the end? Now you've got yourself your Hallow's Eve jack o' lantern. You know what I mean. <laughs> very good very good okay so yeah there you go uh agents of shield three pack they announced the two heads so uh apologies marvel uh dan Yun and uh other dudes i can't forgot the other two guys names um for my harsh words with regards to the sharon carter head sculpt uh, i am retracting that that previous statement and reassessing uh, my views on this three pack although still probably not going to buy it lads i'm afraid but <laughs> just letting you know but it was also a nice way to lead into me being able to um, brag about my bargains <laughs> my x-men 275 bargains uh oh and so on the street fight front we just got chun Li. have seen ken yet no sound of the two new ones yeah so i've i've never seen a ken in the wild or online uh over here and m bison and dal sim are up for pre-order with a few of our uh, friendly local uh game uh friendly local uh, toy short stores but all for like may june time uh, it's all pre-ordered so keeping an eye on it nonetheless because i definitely fancy that m bison um i might skip dalsim i don't know does look like a good figure but it was just never uh, i'm basically just buying the characters that I used to play you know with my characters of choice when i used to play the game as a kid um so ryu ken chun Li. Jono, you are. Do you do it? <laughs> Amazon UK have got Ken up right now. Okay, thank you. I'm not going to jump on it right now, but I will jump on that. I'm going on holiday on Saturday, easy. So I'm like, I'm a bit loath to order stuff, and I've got so much stuff arriving over the next two weeks. I'll circle back around to that and talk to it in a bit. Uh, Sharon Carter would fit in with the White Widow gals. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely, she would. Yeah. Yeah. But that's. Um, and then you have to. Then it's, you're into that question of are you. Are you MCU purist? Are you comic book purist? Do you mix them up? I've definitely, in my X-Men collection, when I put the display out, I definitely mix up comic book and animated series. So we've got a few of the X-Men animated uh, characters from the VHS run last year, and I've just been mixing them up with some older um, X-Men Marvel Legends that I've got um, from the year before, or two or three years before. Um, so mixing it up. But I don't. I'd I very rarely put anything movie or TV show out with the comic booky stuff. Uh, however, that said, she would. You're absolutely right. Uh, or if you if you were um, unconstrained and let your imagination run wild and had some good manchild carpet playtime, who gives a shit? Just mix them up in it. Make your own little army of white widows. So, yeah, go for it. Fill your boots, mate. <laughs> cool okay there's the three part let me move on to my next piece of prepared content which is da -da -da -da, my fallen toys no i thought i was out and then he pulls me back in <laughs> todd you wanker oh dear these caught my eye the music uh maniacs line they're up for pre-order around and about now i think i've set up a link in my little linky thing i did there you go on amazon um, so Alice Cooper and Ozzy Osbourne were the first two revealed over, I don't know, the last five or six days or so. The rumours knocking about are that the second pair are going to be Rob Zombie and the Iron Maiden Eddie character. Um, that's the rumours there. They're $24.99, just reviewing my notes. Um, obviously, it's a McFarlane line. You guys know that me and, me and McFarlane aren't... aren't the best of mates right now me and todd aren't aren't good friends over the uh the kind of treatment of the, the uk customer base with regards to dc multiverse in particular um but i was generally slipping away anyway i've still not had my cat catman figure that i pre-ordered last june so we're creeping up on a whole year now on that pre-order which is like pandemic wait times But as you guys well know, or certainly some of you will have heard me mention it before, I'm a I'm a big fan when when my these two loves of mine, the action figure collecting and the you know the music stuff, 
mashed together. I've got, I've definitely got in my boxes down there. I've got some old stuff. I've got some Beatles Yellow Submarine figures. Uh, in fact, some of you guys will have seen. Um, well, I can't move the camera, but you've probably seen my my, my Beatlesy stuff. And my um, and my Lego Yellow Submarine. I've picked up some of the Necker stuff in the past. I've got an Angus in there somewhere. Uh, I'm sure I've mentioned this before. Uh, me, me Simpsons, Pete Townsend's out by me guitar amp over there. So, yeah, I love it when the two combine, and I've always got my eye on the stuff that Necker does around this. So it's definitely caught my eye. It does say limited articulation, and closely, closely examining the pictures, it is very much McFarlane limited articulation, single elbow joint, single knee joint, maybe a bit of movement in the ankles there, heads, perhaps a little bit in the wrists. So it's all good. There's definitely... Uh, what I would describe as a kind of heavy metal shock rock focus there. If they've got Alice Cooper and Ozzy Osbourne, uh, as Connor has uh, noted <laughs> in the chat, you know, famous for their, their heavy metal kind of shock rock stuff uh, and more performative style of um, uh, heavy metal bands, you know, as does Rod Zombie and the whole Eddie thing with Iron Maiden is obviously um, about kind of rock character um uh, you know a, a, a fictional character so that's all all good but yeah definitely more of a heavy metal slant and I, and again i suppose you could argue this is the the todd effect you know <laughs> on full display just as he did with dc multiverse he's he's looking for the spikes the chains the the darks you know what can i spawnify what can i make spawny um, oh, I know, some old heavy metal dude drape a snake around his neck and give him some evil, like, demonic bat wings and stuff. Which is fine, but it I, I would be interested to see or know if they would expand the borders of music maniacs to be something a little bit more wider. You know, I'm a, I'm a classic rock dude, so I would love to see The Who, Led Zepp, Beatles, Stones, you know, that kind of stuff would be very exciting to me. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, um... Or even into your 80s, get some hair rock stuff going on. Get your, um, <laughs> get your big hair dudes out there. Give us some Bon Jovi, you know. Uh, give us some Van Halen type things. Uh, I'd be excited to see that. Um, or even you know some cheeky pop stars. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be adverse to. I mean, I probably wouldn't pick them up, but a few cheeky pop stars. You know, an absolute steal. How has nobody done? When you think about like Necker, who do music action figure lines, and there's been all sorts of stuff out there, how has nobody done a Rick Astley? <laughs> do you know what I mean? That would fly off the shelves. Anyway, so uh, these have caught my eye, and if I this will be a very classic case of if I see them on a shelf in HMV and I've got a bit of cash in my pocket and you know, stuff's going all right, and I'm in a good mood and what have you, then. Um, get your bats at the dollar store during Halloween, then I'd pick them up. And, and certainly not a pre-order. I don't see this as being something that, you know, I've got to, like, you know, rush to find a, a pre-order for. Um, although it is up on Amazon right now. Um, but I can certainly see me picking up a, an Aussie and an Alice Cooper, both super cool, you know, iconic uh, stars of metal. You know, give me a... Give me the Davis brothers from the Kinks. You know what I mean? That's that's. I think that's what it is. Is he's not quite. Um, this is probably the edge of where my metal fandom would sit. You know, I'd I'd want to kind of bring it back more into what I suppose you describe as the more kind of classic rock type stuff. You know, give me a Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> I'm such a dad rocker. <laughs> Oh dear! Right, let's see what everyone, let's see what chat's got to say about these guys then. So uh, <laughs> you probably have to buy a Batman figure to get that, Connor. <laughs> He's already done a uh, a Batman with a guitar with spikes and looking all metal. Ah, hi McMurphy, number one. Nice to see you, my man. Uh, number two, I would expect a Kiss set to follow since McFarlane did a bunch of Kiss sets in the late nineties. Yes, you're right. Yeah, this is not the first time Todd's done uh, music stuff because I've definitely got... I feel like my Jimi Hendrix was a McFarlane figure. Would my Jimi Hendrix have been a McFarlane? Can't remember. Um, so, yeah, Kiss Set, and that definitely would, would line up well with these types of characters... Uh, personalities, I should say. 
um, for sure. Uh, kind of thinking an Alice Cooper would be a nice addition. Um, kind of swinging around. Are you a metal fan, Connor? Um, <laughs> limited articulation, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Bobby, back with the uh, back with the cold slither, yeah. Hashtag give us cold slither. Did Super Seven ever do anything with cold slither designs? I don't really follow Super Seven's releases, but I, uh, somebody let me know. Ozzy got arrested for pissing on the Alamo. He did indeed. Yeah, definitely need to source a drum set now. So I was looking at. Um, sorry, I'm looking around like um, because uh, I've got you seen the the little uh, guitar and drum displays that are designed for you know like a little ornamental display piece. Have you ever seen those? There's there's some quite tall guitars. I've got I'm looking around because I've got one. I've got a Paul McCartney um, Hofner bass one. I thought it might have been out out but it's not it's not on any of my shelves it's probably in one of the boxes uh but they've done even smaller ones now and they've called them uh dollhouse size and there is they do drum kits as well and i was eyeing them up thinking and i was they've got some dimensions on the pictures and i was eyeing them up thinking ooh, drum kit because i've got some uh, i've got some guitars that uh, you know like i say they i've got the the old the old Jimi Hendrix figure, the Angus figure. Um, I've got Oz, the old McFarlane Oz from the Buffy Vampires line. He had a guitar. Uh, I've got loads of like the latching figure guitars. I think I even bought a wrestling figure once uh, that's in the depths of those boxes because I had no interest in the wrestling figure, but it came with an acoustic guitar <laughs> to get the guitar. And I've done some photos with the, the stuff. And I was eyeing them up thinking, I wonder if, I wonder if. So uh, I'll send you the link and you can, uh, you can have a nose of yourself. Oh, Jono, your your message about Rick Astley uh, doesn't got the hasn't got the button for me to uh, to bring it up. Why is that, uh, Rick Astley? Because companies like making money, Chris. <laughs> I can't read the rest of the thing. Well, apart from the Hasbro Star Wars team, yeah, sure. I think if they did a Rick Astley action figure in the Music Maniacs, am I wrong? I don't think I am. I think I'm right. I think that thing would fly fly off the shelves. Uh, like an 80s, get a Rick Astley 80s style Madonna on the go. Just saying. Yeah, Stevie Nicks, grinning squinty face. All right. Uh, Todd likes Metallica as well. So Metallica, um, when I was mooching around doing a bit of research uh, yesterday to to see if there'd been any like you know name only announcements, or whatever, and saw those rumors about Rob Zombie and Eddie, uh, Metallica was also. Um, mentioned as a as a potential or had been, excuse me, a bit gassy, uh, was was out there in the you know in the wind as a uh, on the grapevine, sorry, as a as a potential. Going by our current ticket prices, that figure would cost about five hundred quid. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Now I looked at the Stevie Nicks tour; and it's just an absolute impossibility. Five hundred quid. Go see Stevie Nicks or buy a Marvel Legends Galactus <laughs> or a Dragonfly, I suppose. You folks would be more into Dragonflies. Hendrix was McFarlane, yeah, okay. I've not got it out. Again, it's in my, my deep boxes. 70s version of Stevie Nicks. I'm waiting for that BST AXN Kiss set to go on clearance. All I want is their instruments. Nothing against Kiss. Yeah, I mean Kiss is another one of those bands like uh, yeah, rock and roll all night and all that. You know, I'm, I know enough. Hey, Jason, um, I know I know enough of their tunes, but I wouldn't consider myself a Kiss fan particularly. But I wouldn't you know turn the radio over if um, like uh, what's that one strutting? No, I'm making it up in my head now. But yeah, I wouldn't change the I wouldn't turn that dial kind of thing. I'd be quite happy. Um but I and you know to to reiterate my my space is a very kind of classic rock space. I listen to a lot of your know, sort of late 60s, 70s rocky stuff. The Who, Led Zepp, Kinks, then their regulars on my playlist, Beatles, big Beatles fan, and uh, you guys know that. 
the Stones, listen to a lot of the Stones. So uh, a, a Jimmy Page and a Robert Plant, uh, a Lennon and McCartney, a Ringo on his drum set, stuff like that would be super appealing to me in this Music Maniacs kind of line. Um, you know, give me the David, like I say, the David's brother, I think the brothers, I mentioned them earlier. Roger Daltrey with the tassels, the tassely leather, you know, that kind of thing would be would be ideal in, in the world of Music Maniacs for me. Um, you know, or, or move a bit more into the late 70s, into the 80s. Like a heart or something, you know. A couple, uh, couple of chicks on the guitars, definitely, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rick Astley would have to be a trick figure. You think you're buying Robert Plant when you open it, Rick Astley? Yeah, we like a we like a greetings card uh, tab in it so that when you pop up, <laughs> pop open the pack, it starts playing the song. <laughs> and there's Jason joining us this evening. Hi, Jason. How you doing? <laughs> well, you, you come to the stream late, mate. We're uh, we're already cracking on through. Already cracking on through. Uh, so there you go, Music Maniacs. Um, let me know uh, your thoughts if you're watching video on demand. Head to the comments down below. Uh, who might? Who would your your dream um, music fandom be in an action figure. Uh, because I think there's a market. Uh, I know it's Super 7 have done a Beastie Boys three-pack and they've done some stuff like uh, Biggie and two-pack in the past, haven't they? Was that Super 7 in the reaction lines? And I think that those types of things are quite popular, like Run DMC and stuff. So you could definitely stray into your hip-hop and rap and such like. Um, the Music Maniacs line has got an enormous amount of potential. I, I just think that... Todd's gonna to Todd, <laughs> you know what I mean. He's a metal fan. He likes spikes. He likes chains. He likes metal, and so he's just gonna stick quite firmly to the the heavy metal. He's called a music maniacs, and he should have just called them metal maniacs. And we'll never see the line, you know, go any further than that. And you'll see some stuff like, um, uh, you know, Guns and Roses are the obvious choice, aren't they? To, um, to to get out there or um a metallica the likes of metallica or maybe some grungy stuff like i would just will we see another kurt cobain i know there's been kurt cobain's done before um it'd be nice to see like a dave grohl i suppose you know like a foo fighters version of dave grohl and stuff but um yeah i don't know i don't know oh yeah in fact there you go connor's just said uh <laughs> we all need 112 slashes in their lives i've got one but it's a guitar hero one, so it's like a like a cartoony a cartoony version of Slash. I missed the other one. And if you go and have a look, the the New York City, so it was the New York City John Lennon in the um, uh, in the denim with the the white t shirt with the black trimming that says New York City, and New York City John Lennon, and then there was a Slash and a Jimi Hendrix and the Angus from ACDC. And I, th I want to say there was a Kurt Cobain then as well in that in that original McFarlane line. Or am I? Oh, I don't know. See, I, because I, I I collected some Necker and uh, sort of music heroes stuff as well. So it's it blur, you know I conflate it in my head. And because they're in one of the very far back, I'll, I'll take a photo or a video one day to show you what I'm talking about with me be three meter deep thing. But I have to use a hook to pull the boxes from the back out on. Um, but they've been in boxes for years and because I don't display them. I sort of forget who they were and when I bought them and, or what they were. You know, these were like Forbidden Planet pickups in 1999. Um, anyway, going back. Glad to see Hendrix as one of the few tanks to make the cut. Oh, Yanks, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah fair enough. Uh, yeah, I like, you know, I like American bands too. <laughs> I like it. It's a little uh, one, one little kind of corner, weird little niche interest I have is I like the crooners. I listen to Dean and and Frank and Sammy and all those guys. Um, Tony Bennett and all that. Uh, and I like um, uh, oh Jesus, you know uh, who's the guy? He sang Greece and uh, my eyes adored you. Who was that? Um, Jesus, his name's Frankie Valley. Fuck me. I keep saying this, I shouldn't start these streams so late because things begin to, like, wires are just doing that in my head. <laughs> uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, yeah, so uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. 
And it'd be great to have like um, you know Buddy Holly, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry, um, uh, Little Richie with a piano, you know, with a really um, um, elaborate outfit. Uh, John Lee Hooker, you know, stuff like that would be awesome. Or like your Motown Soul guys, wouldn't wouldn't it be awesome to have a a Smokey? I suppose or Stevie, Stevie Wonder, like seventies Stevie Wonder would be great, wouldn't it? Nice uh, Spitfire flat cap with uh, wide collar leather, some uh, um, ornate sunglasses with some embellishments. Elton John, I love I love sixties, uh, late sixties, early seventies Elton John stuff. Uh, big goodbye, Yellow Brick Road fan. And he obviously <laughs> brought to the world a wealth of exciting and interesting costume wear to make an action figure out of. They did do one. NECA did one, but it was really expensive. It was the um, um, the the baseball, you know, the sparkly uh, baseball get-up. Um, but the, uh, he did Donald Duck, didn't he? That's the other famous one. G4 says a mini replica of Jimmy Page's double neck. Yeah, so there's mini replicas. That's what I was talking about before. And I've seen some drum versions of those, but they're even smaller than the, not like the ornamental versions with the stands, but like even smaller. And I wondered if they, because it said 112th Doll's House compatible or something on it. Oh, Jason's sick. He was napping. Oh, dear. Well, get well soon, my friend. I hope you're all right. Yeah, the Elton John and the Freddie Mercury, yeah. And the Freddie Mercury is the classic um, yellow leather, isn't it? With the vest and the white pants and the uh, um, the night trainers. Yeah, very good. All right, it looks like we've got a lot of music fans out there. So, yeah, and tons of... Uh, it's just... A, so, it's it's a, well, it, a wide... It's as wide as it is deep what you could do with a Music Maniacs line. But I think Todd's just going to Todd, and we're just going to get a load of, like, you know, metal with perhaps some sort of stuff that sits just on the outside of the metal interests or could, you know, blend in. Um, or I imagine the licensing stuff can be tricky. You know, because it's not like going to DC Comics and uh, or Warner Brothers and just going, can I have your DC Comics license to make action figures? Or going to Games Workshop and saying, can I do your, your, your Warhammer 40k or... Nickelodeon, can I do do your avatar or whatever? What else has Todd got? He's got all sorts of stuff, hasn't he? Um, it's not it's not quite as simple, is it? Because I imagine you've got to there's individual likeness licensing that goes on for each individual person, unless there's like um, unless there's like a blanket license you get with a with a management company, or because you can imagine that. Alice and Ozzy are under the same representation. Although isn't Ozzy's manager actually his wife, Sharon? Isn't she? Anyway, I'm I'm off in the weeds. Come back, Chris. Come back. Um, but yeah, it's, it's as wide as it is deep. The the amount of possibilities, like the the t- you could do so much stuff from the eighties. Can you imagine some of the wild flock of flock of seagulls? Gary, uh, not oh. Adam Ant. <laughs> I stopped myself there. Adaman and uh, you know that'd be a quite an exciting little figure. Madonna I mentioned before. Uh, obviously the boss. You know loads of people would love to have a boss action figure, wouldn't they? Eighties um, style boss. Yeah. So it's, it's as it's as it's as big as it is deep. But I think Todd's just going to tod it. <laughs> However, it has caught my eye, and therefore it's qualified for a listen to your friend Chris episode. There we go. Uh, right, okay, what's next on my prepared? I think this is the, the last item on the prepared list, and this is the fact that I'm going on holiday, folks. <laughs> so I'm going on holiday. Uh, I'm flying out on Saturday. So I won't be... Uh, if there is exciting stuff that, that comes out of the WonderCon, please tag me on or DM me on Discord or Insta or whatever. Get the stuff in front of me, because uh, when I land, I'll, you know, uh, I'll boot up the phone and see what's the what. Um, but I'll be out the loop for quite a long time because I'm. Uh, it's a long flight. I'm going somewhere a little bit more exotic this time around. And um, but the reason I'm bringing that up is because <laughs> obviously there's going to be no stream for the two weeks that I'm away, and there's probably going to be very little in terms of video activity on the channel for the two weeks I'm away. Um, but it was just an opportunity, really, to perhaps you know talk about a little bit of you know my my kind of first. Hey, Universal Toy Collector. Hey, folks, Universal Toy Collector's here. Um, 
five grand this weekend. Five grand raised for um, the holiday village in Florida near Disney. That's name escapes me. <laughs> the give a kid a wish holiday thing. Enjoy your vacation. Yeah, sorry, I forget sometimes. I'm talking to a big bunch of uh, North Americans a lot of the time. Uh, but yeah, just it just uh, it just allows me to take a little detour into kind of uh, first world problem YouTuber woes because. Um, I was thinking about this. So this this package that's caught... I don't know if some of you folks saw my uh, Instagram post before, but I have, I've got a package that was coming over from uh, the States that has got snatched by customs just at the cusp of getting it. I thought it might have arrived before holiday. And all the Marvel Legends and G.I. Joe Classified series releases are happening over the next two weeks while I'm away. So there's going to be parcels coming to the door and no one home to collect them. I've, I've lined up the mother-in-law to come and check you know, the, the bins, because the delivery folks put them in the wheelie bins out the front. But what that means is, is that I'm way, way, way behind already on the North American, um, uh, the, like my North American peers, I suppose, here in the in the sort of YouTube action figure reviewer space, because they, they've already had them in hand for a week at least, maybe two weeks for some of them. The reviews are up, they're out, and uh, by the time I've received the figures and then got back and then recorded them, because, of course, as, as you guys know, I don't I don't review out the box. I open the box and then spend a couple of days with it before, before I drop my review. Um, it's... Uh, it means I'm going to be, like, four or five weeks, maybe even six weeks behind everyone else. And, and in this game, at the level I'm at, if you're not, if you're not first, you're basically last. Is I'm almost like, is there a point? Because the whole thing about this channel was, uh, you know, the, the, those kind of key three ideas were that I don't out-of-box review, that I offer a thorough review because I wanted to see more thorough reviews, didn't feel like people were offering those thorough, that the thoroughness of review I wanted. And so I've decided to do that. And there's a small niche audience, you guys, you lovely, lovely guys who uh, like that kind of... A uh, deeper dive into the figures after more hands-on time, um, and and put the idea of helping someone's purchase decision. You know, that was the the other thing I wanted to do was that like help people actually make a decision as to whether it's the figure they want. Because again, I was finding I was watching reviews and I'd see them, and uh, yeah, and these are big reviewers I was watching, like big, hundred times more subscribers than me, and I was like, well, you're not. I've I've watched it and it's fine, but it's still not really helping me make my mind up as to whether I want to buy it or not, you know, or whether I've made a right decision pre-ordering something, you know. So it's um oh yeah, well Connor, you've got even more territory to complain than I, I suppose, in this space. So I'm gonna be uh, weeks and weeks and weeks behind, and if you're not first, you're last. And it's a shame really when you're trying to kind of grow your channel. Um because I I think other than a, a, a small collection of you kind of you know the, the hundred fans theory you know, folks like you who are who are here because you enjoy what i'm doing with regards to the channel i actually think in the wider sort of toy tuber space there's not a lot of loyalty really i think folks will just first video up that hits they'll watch the first video for their little lucky loo moment they're quite happy to to watch the reviewer just kind of open the box and manhandle the figure on camera for 10 minutes point at a few things and consider that a review you know um Whereas I think folks like myself and Connor in chat, you know, are much more about, right, what do I like? What don't I like? What's good? What stands out? What's what's the depth of the figure kind of thing? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. What am I getting at? I don't know. I've done that thing again where I've started something and not the point. I suppose we're just giving a, a little look into the how the sausage is made. Um, so going on holiday, you know, but you can't, you can't not have a family holiday in order to review action figures for a 1500 subscriber channel you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's i suppose that's the thing if you if you go to the likes of say um you know i'm thinking and until i'm a robo or a shartimus or a d amazing or uh, who else is like really massive like the marvel legends stuff uh, who's that guy x manny it's got loads and loads or dave at display model behavior or whatever until i'm that that size where people would watch a review that i did because it was a review that i was doing I'm in this kind of mud fight with this this sort of mid well not even I'm not even the mud fight with the mid level I think there's a number of folks that are shooting ahead of me and if you 
not first year last. And I built this channel basically on the fact that the UK was getting loads of G.I. Joe classified figures way before... <laughs> everybody else anyway so i can't really throw that much shade because because that's what i built my subscriber account on but circling back around to the point uh, i've got a few bits pre-recorded um there's some amazon action figure accessory reviews that are half done um which i'm going to try and get finished over the next couple of nights and preload them in so they can drop while i'm away uh, i got some fun little um my computer accessories and stuff. Um, although my hair length is going to change drastically from the intro to the videos <laughs> to the final thoughts section on the videos because I've opened them up, played with them, and then recorded the second part of the vid and I've had my hair cut in the middle. Um, and that, and I was hoping to maybe get uh, receive some figures in the post today that were coming from uh, Big Bad Toy Store, but... His Majesty's Customs got them. And if they take, you, you know that they'll take at least 24 hours to turn that around. And then by the time they sent me the bill for the customs, because they're going to charge me, I'm going to get charged for the tax. And then got it sent out to me. It's probably going to arrive by, well, it's Good Friday as well, isn't it? So I'm probably not, it's probably going to arrive. If, if I get real lucky, it might come Thursday. But then at most, I'll record the unboxing and I won't have time to play with them. And I really don't like opening them up. Well, actually, now hang on, when do I fly out? Fly out on Saturday. I've got a lot of packing to do on Friday, though. Anyway, uh, so let's see what chat's got to say about my, my little uh, toy tuber windows. Let's see. Uh, so, Jono, uh, first look vids will always get a good view count, but I still watch my favorite viewers to get their take on it. Well, yeah, sure, uh, Jono. And I think that's, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not playing down the fact that I've got folks like you guys here who always comment on the vids, always around share thoughts and obviously watch the videos because the thoughts you're sharing are based on comments that i'm making i find that super fulfilling you know i don't want to play that down for one bit i am a massive subscriber to the kind of you know 100 true fans idea um but i just um i know it just kind of hurts me sometimes when i see some some reviewers out there who are who have who are shooting ahead because it's first in hand. And I think, Jesus, it's like they're, they're filming it on a potato. You can, <laughs> you can barely hear them. There's no no thought or care or attention put into some elements of the production value, at least. You know, like if you look at Connor's videos on mine, it's the little things like making fun. they show your shit's in focus. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I think, how's this guy? You got folks like me and Connor grinding. And this guy's put a video up, and he's, he's just he's, he's just on his kitchen top. With a bit, or filming reviews in, in tiny little light boxes that they bought off Amazon that's not big enough to... And so you've got the shiny metal sides and stuff. And I'm just like, come on. <laughs> Jesus. Which, which tells me that, you know, first is first. You know, folks are much more interested in just getting that first look than they are... Um, sometimes in, in getting the review, which yeah, which is fine because I, I knew that was going to be the case when I made that decision to say, well, what, right, what is my, you know, what is my platform? Well, it's thorough reviews. It's not out the box reviewing. I'm going to take the time um, to really absorb the figure before I review it, um, and it is going to be, you know, fine detail type stuff. I knew that was going to be the case. Uh, oh, John who follows up. Unless you're big in with the likes of Hasbro. And other action figure companies, good luck getting figures that early if you're not paying crazy. Not paying crazy money for them. Yeah, I mean, I'll be the first to admit that I've definitely, uh, you know, when the when the likes of in demand and whole shebang and Kapow toys and stuff were getting that import stock in early, I was like, yeah, do you know what? I'm, I'll drop that um, extra couple of quid to get it on an early import from those guys. Although that also was a bit of a protest purchase. <laughs> <laughs> to say i'm not buying from hasbro pulse i'm buying from the independence uh, in fact folks if you go over to uh connor's channel full as figures in the chat connor pop a pop a link in uh if you can if i've got links links permitted uh there is an interview with me and um uh lawrence from a punk with toys where we talk about this very idea talk about you know um buying from Hasbro Pulse or buying from Independence and, and me and Lawrence talk a little bit about, you know, importing or in that in that bit of a mud fight to get stuff early and get stuff uh, up and up and away, you know, kind of thing. Um so uh, yeah, Connor, if you've got a link to that video, drop it in the chat for anyone who's not seen it. And go subscribe to Connor's channel and go subscribe to Stu while you're here as well. Universal Toy Collectors hanging around. 
Um, because they're both doing great stuff. Let's see what Khan's got to say. Slow, sustainable growth based on your USB style will pay dividends in the long run. Oh yeah, I'm not. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not. Um, I'm not sat here going. No, I'm not. You know, I'm not having a big cry about it. Well, I suppose you could interpret what I'm saying as I'm having a big cry about it. I think it's just more about sort of it's that sausage. How the sausage is made thing. I think folks don't um, realize that when when you then kind of commit yourself to this as a as an endeavor, whether it be you know. Um, whether it be because you're trying to, you know, become a YouTube rock star, or whether uh, I suspect Connor, you've got a similar opinion to me about it that you there's something occupational about the hobby. Then it's not just about enjoying your action figures, but there's also like a you know kind of occupational doing piece that brings the enjoyment even more to life. And of course, the community interaction stuff I, I find very fulfilling too. I just think like, Jesus, it's. The only reason this video is popular is because it's the first one to have this figure in hand. It looks like it's filmed on a potato. It looks like it's been recorded in a tin can with a string. It sounds like it's recorded in a tin can with a string. It's frequently going in and out of focus. The guy won't stop manhandling the figures. I can't even see any of the any of the shit on it. It's it, and now it's now it is in focus, but it's focused on his hand, not the figure. You know, I'm just like, come on. There's no, uh, I don't know. And so some of the more popular guys, that like, I mean, uh, again, I'm not throwing shade because I really enjoy uh, the stuff he does, but like, dear amazing, it's so chilled that I find it edges over into monotonous sometimes. <laughs> and I'm just like, there's no dynamic, there's no pitch pace or tone around this, or I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're being honest about it. I've been in the same boat. Yeah, and that's, and I want to be clear, it's not, you know, I'm not. Um, criticizing I would always be the first to say that um, if you want to do this sort of thing you should just do it just get a you, you just got to turn on a camera and record you just got to do it so to say that someone's filmed it on a potato is not um, not a criticism because I think everyone's got to start somewhere and I, I definitely have an advantage from the fact that the uh, the MOD side of it stands for Ministry of Dice and I've been board game YouTubing um, I mean, I've been involved in some other communities where I've been doing some YouTubing for a long time so I kind of cut my teeth with cameras and USB mics and lighting and, and all that kind of stuff um, with board game components and um, miniatures you know, war game miniatures and stuff before I uh, decided to expand out into my other loves and interests um, in this little <laughs> nerd cave that's, I don't think there's a corner of the nerd community i haven't had a little little dabble in but um so i can't I, you know i can't criticize that much because i would always say to someone well just just get yourself a logitech c920 and figure out how to hook your phone up to your computer with something like iv cam and just go for it you know so i can't be too critical but then when, when you don't see the any evolution in that or um you think well how the only merit this video actually has in comparison to the time, care, and attention that others I know put into their craft. I think, well, the only merit it's got is that you were the first to get your hands on the figure, which means that the wide, the broader, wider community's only interest in YouTube is just watching a first look, you know. But then is that the audience I want? That's the, you know, that's the secondary question. So I suppose the point is, as my loyal regular viewers do i still bother get back from holiday and do i still bother they'll they'll be have so <laughs> when i come back from my holiday i'm gonna have my x-men 97 my wolverine 50th anniversary stuff uh lo loads of classified as will many of you um loads of classified in hand so who's on the way um metalhead techno viper the retro scarlet and duke um or all due on like April the 10th or something. <laughs> There's like a massive list of them all due on April the 10th. Or I say due, they're going to print the label off and tell me it's dispatched. In fact, my Nightcrawler, my X-Men 97 Nightcrawler should be here already. They took money for it like last Tuesday. And they still not put it in a box. Uh, Jason's uh, got some. Let's take a look and see what chat's got to say. Uh, a lot of early reviewers I see tend to be kind of boring in a, in desperate need of editing and complain way too much. Their toys do chill. Yeah, but you know, who am I? Who am I to comment? I'm sorry, complaining. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, GeForce is saving for Joe Fest. Not very well, but I am. Yeah, I'd love to be able to get out, um, get out there to something like Joe Fest sometimes. But I had a look at it. I did kind of investigate, and there's a whole thing where I've got to, to like fly in. To, I've got to fly out to. Uh, who was it? Chicago, maybe? Off the top of my head. And then I've got to get a connecting flight from Chicago to somewhere else. And then I've got to get uh, another short flight from there to there. And there's like three flights going, doing 12 hours across the length and breadth of, of the US. I was like, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> Not for the price, anyway. If you enjoy doing it, Chris Bother. Yeah, I think that, I mean, obviously, that's, let's call it out for what it is. That's how, how it's going to fall down. I'll do it because I for my own enjoyment my own entertainment i just i like uh, and it's what motivates me then to actually go right let's try some more interesting poses and i'm always trying to uh get a little bit more exciting especially like uh, with the one minute um showcase type things oh here we go connor okay here's another thing i don't like everyone talks about what's coming sometimes it's nice to focus on the cool stuff we've been lucky to have got yeah i yeah 100 percent. i get you on that one I get you on that one. I do like to sometimes when there's so much stuff coming, like like there is going to be over the next two weeks, I get a little overwhelmed with it because I like to like really. I, I have a um, a desk figure, um, although my desk figure has ended up on the display now, and uh, Airborne's gone on the end there. I like having a desk figure that just kind of hangs out on 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 this desk. When I'm finished up with you guys, I'll clear all this down and get my work laptop up on here and I'll be in work mode and on Teams. I'm just like, off camera, you can see my face, but my hands are... <laughs> I'm posing up figures and stuff. So I like to have a desk figure hanging around and I've got this little display here, which I like to use for my my recents and, and to engage with and I can just sort of... Right, let's see, new Wonder Woman. What can I do with that? Although I'm finding her very hard to... In fact, I'm finding McFarlane very... Di Difficult to pose up of late. That's a whole other discussion for another day. Um, and so I do, I find it very overwhelming when so much stuff comes at once and I'm like, oh, where do I even start? And the review process of reviewing the figures is is actually a nice way of me kind of, how a nice way of me reconciling that because I go, right, which one am I going to review first? I mean, I'll unbox them all in, in just one because uh, I'll set the overhead camera rig on this side over here. Um, film it, unbox it all, but then, then I'll go right. Which one will I review first? And then it kind of gives me something. But when the desk figure set all gets crazy, and when I come back from holiday, I'm gonna have a night crawler, a saber tooth, uh, casual clothes, Canuck Wolverine. What else is there? The Executioner, the new Cyclops, because I'm gonna upgrade me VHS Cyclops to the new Cyclops. Then that big raft of classified figures. And I've still got the Necker D and D Elk Horn, which is due around now-ish, sometime, and um, and a, a fuck ton of McFarlane toys. But I'm on I'm on the verge of just cancelling those pre-orders, to be honest. Um, so I get it. Yeah, I I feel you on that one, Connor. I really do. Yeah, really do. Uh, Jason, in the last week, my Clutch and Vamp, Techno Viper, Metalhead, and Retro Duke showed up. My wallet spoke, won't speak to me, but I'm having a blast. Yeah, sure, man, but it, it's a bit overwhelming to know where to get your man-child playtime in, isn't it, sometimes? Jono's still waiting for Firefly. Firefly version 2, walk over Island, Firefly. <laughs> yeah, you got to revisit your collection. I'll tell you what else as well. So I've talked about this before, and apologies for the repetition for those of you who've heard me say this. Because I've only got one kind of action figure display... Um, space up here well i don't i've got these shelves up here but those are those are, i've got my little star wars one and my red dwarf stuff and um my fighting fantasy me fighting fantasy and D, &D fantasy stuff there that's all sort of themed off so i've got my spice racks row three spice racks you can just see captain america and a few bits at the end there um but my collection far exceeds the amount of display set space i've got um and i've talked about my boxes in my big two and a half three meter cupboards here I like to just pull a box out, take the take the figures off the display that are there, and just fill it up with a new, you know, create a new display. Just go with my whims and just create a new display, and that's quite nice because that sort of forces me to 
Uh, well, number one, it forces me to actually dust my shit. <laughs> How many of you out there have got really dusty action figures? I'm always dusty, man. I've got some uh, makeup brushes and I give them a little clean off before I put them back in the box. So it forces me to dust and keep things clean and sort of organised. But it also encourages me, the act of changing the display, to revisit figures, have a new play, and then I'll dig one out and I'll be like, eh, do you know what, that could be a desk figure for a bit. <laughs> I'm going to play with that again. And um, so uh, that's that's nice. That whole process of changing my display around encourages me to, uh, you know, click into it. Oh, G Force Race! It still hasn't opened Firefly. Still play it. Grunt's a great figure. I still play with my Grunt. Grunt's out at the minute. He's up there. He's hanging out with. Uh, he looks quite good with. Um, Mutton Junkyard and Airborne, kind of like a little helmeted squad of dudes that I've got together. And what I've done is I've given Airborne the Crimson Guard rifle and um, obviously Mutton Junkyard, uh, Junkyard, uh, Mutt, sorry, and um, a Grunt have got the same rifle. So there's actually quite a nice little, nice little vibe about those three together up there. Been filling around lately with that Garrow figure I picked up last year. Now the new season of the show is airing. Who's Garrow? You'd have to. I probably know it or some, and I've just had a moment's blank. But I don't know who Garrow is. Is that like a Dragon Ball figure or something, Jono? G Force thinks he needs the Dal Sim. Yeah, Jason would agrees with me, would prefer spaced out a bit more. Uh, dusting action figures. Yeah, no, get yourself a get yourself a little pack of uh, cheap makeup brushes. Give them a little scooch over. Yeah, I like to I've got too much stuff. I've got a great um, I've got some Lego sets. Um that, that I bought years and years ago, had them out on display on a windowsill no less. Um, got all yellowy and crappy, and I'm just like, oh, I wish I'd take a better care of them. Especially now the discontinued Lego sets. I'm like, ah, people have made fortune for these. <laughs> yeah, it's great fun to see figures we will have to pay full price and get months later go on sale for next to nothing on your side of the pond, G-Force. Yeah, that's annoying as well. That's happened to... Me, recently, I saw something, someone posted a picture, and I was like, really? Come on, they've not even fulfilled the pre-orders over here yet on that. It sucks. I hated that my grand made me clean the silver. I do it now with my plastic. Yeah, absolutely, man. Got to stay on top of that. Guilty the gym. <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving on swiftly. <laughs> Jason uses the makeup brushes, yeah. Uh, Garrow equals Power Rangers plus adult horror plus strippers all wrapped up in a TV show. Right, well, sold. <laughs> sold. I'm on. I'm in. <laughs> Guilty of rubbing the clearance prices. Yeah, do you know what, G-Force? I've said this before, though. Like, when some of the guys were talking about the real kind of Ross Gold Rush um that happened a, a few months back uh, i did say were i in your shoes i and i saw it on the shelf at that price i wouldn't say no i'd buy it at that price i, I can't begrudge you that one bit you know can't begrudge you that one bit but uh it I, I suppose it'd be less painful if it if it was an on the shelf full price figure that you guys were getting on sale in your store but then one day something was on sale over here that you hadn't seen on sale that you know that's just the nature of the game is the fact that you guys are getting stuff on sale that our pre-orders that we've paid up front full price for still haven't shipped that's when it starts to be like a bit of a, uh, a stab yes i don't even <laughs> i knew that i was just leaning into the joke <laughs> Oh dear, right. How long have I been on for? An hour and 20 minutes this week. Okay, well, uh, that's all the all the prepared material I had. That's everything I had on my uh, little agenda to discuss. Once again, just a handful of things that I've been thinking about or caught my eye. I've managed to fill a good hour's worth of stream. But as always, I'll open the floor, see if anybody in chat has got any questions, comments, queries, concerns, inquiries. Um, 
that you'd, uh, that you'd like to throw out there before I wrap it up, uh, then please feel free to do so in the next 30 seconds or so because there's a bit of a time delay between uh, me and uh, receiving your chat, you typing your chat and me receiving it. Uh, otherwise, I'll start to bring us to the close. I'm going to take a moment to get a little bit of a nicotine hit while I'm waiting. Did the ads happen? Were the ads running? Um, because I tried to stop them and I don't know if I managed to do that or not. Oh, thanks, Colin. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, flying out on Saturday and then um, coming back two weeks Saturday after uh, when they um, to then a Sunday of laundry and rest uh, to get over the uh, long travel because it's quite, quite a lengthy uh, quite a lengthy flight and a big big travel and we've got some changes and stuff um <laughs> to get the kids all all set back into school on the monday and uh, i've put a work from home day in for that monday but we're all you know back in the swing of it so yeah we could it'd be great it'd be nice to get away um uh particularly easter um because it's just uh I don't. I don't feel like Christmas is much of a break. You see, I feel like Christmas is Christmas, like family and food and buying gifts. And I think it's hectic and balmy. And then it's New Year's, and then you're back in work, and it's like I need a holiday to get over the holiday. So I feel like Easter's due. I'm ready for a chill. Um, so it'll be nice to get away and go to somewhere a little bit different. Although it'll be the only holiday we have now for the next five years because it's cost, cost an absolute fucking fortune. But uh, that's a conversation for a different stream somewhere else. <laughs> but when I'm back, I'm fighting fit and mad for it. I've been thinking about I need to start working on my on my collaborations. I'm not collaborating enough. Uh, I need to get out there, get my face out there a bit more and get involved in some more things. I was really inspired by, uh, I don't know if he's still here. Stuart, are you still here? But super inspired by what you did on Saturday, man. Really, just really like, uh, I was like, yeah, this dude's, Doing the Lord's work here, it's brilliant. And all these people he's brought together all in this one charitable endeavour. I was very inspired by that. Uh, all right, cool. It looks like it's just um, good um, holiday messages. <laughs> yeah, Christmas isn't holidays, it's a marathon. Damn right it is. Uh, yes, thank you, Bobby. Yeah, great. Um, so keep an eye out. I'll, I'll finish off those uh, couple of half recorded videos that I've got in the pipeline. Get those finished off over the next couple of nights, so at least there's a couple of bits dropping. So keep an eye out for those, but I won't be around much to reply to comments and things. Certainly no stream for the next two weeks. So um, the next you'll see me will probably be if I can maintain this Tuesday schedule, which I seem to have done for a couple of weeks now. He says, cursing himself, so I'll touch some wood. Uh, you'll probably now next see me around the 16th, Tuesday the 16th. So if, you, if you're not already following me on Insta uh, and stuff, then please do uh, over there, because that's where I usually post it notification that something's going on uh or come and join us on the uh discord you know it goes up on there uh, in the meantime everyone have a wonderful rest of your tuesday have a wonderful week it's been a pleasure as always to have you with me here today if you're watching this on the video demand please head down to the comments below and uh, get involved in the conversation just know that i won't reply for a while 